What's up guys and welcome back to another episode on Architect Network. In this video, we're gonna jump into my top 10 tips and tricks for using Grasshopper. So I've been using Grasshopper over the last 10 years as a designer, as a computational specialist, I've even used it for fabrication. And these tips work for everyone from beginners to expert. I'm always learning these new little shortcuts and tricks that helps my own scripting workflow. If you're just starting out with learning Grasshopper and want to learn more after this video, you can check out our Grasshopper Masterclass in the link below. It's a three part course that takes you from the absolute basics and teaches you the fundamentals of how to use Grasshopper. So let's jump into it, my top 10 tips and tricks for scripting with Grasshopper. Okay, we're gonna jump straight into it with one of my most useful ones, which uh, is very simple, how to open up Grasshopper and import Grasshopper files into Grasshopper. So you may already know that if you grab a Grasshopper file and drag it onto the canvas, it opens up your script, which uh, is you know useful. Uh, but you may not have noticed, and I didn't notice this for a while, when you drag it on, you'll notice the canvas kind of unrolls at the top or, or like uh, peels back. And there's actually a whole bunch of different uh, options here. So open is by the default, but you can also insert a file, group, bring it in and group it, bring it in as a cluster or examine a file uh, with the file viewer. Um, so these are super useful. For example, if I'm working on this script and I wanna bring elements from this script in, if I just import it, it brings that script into this one, which is really useful. I was always opening up, copy and pasting the script uh, from one script to another. Uh, same thing, if you do it with the grouping, it just simply groups it when it imports it. Uh, it can be useful just because you see it all uh, grouped together uh, visually. Uh, the cluster one, it, this is also really useful for those quick little scripts you're always bringing in. It brings in the script, but inside of a cluster. So that's also a great one for those kind of uh, scripts that you're constantly using. And finally, uh, which one I don't use, but you can examine the file and you can see all of the uh, components and things inside of it. Second tip is to actually use the grid on the canvas. So we've all seen these scripts, these grasshopper scripts that are like crazy spaghetti mess. So a loose rule that I say is like a, a, a used one component in each one of the kind of columns of the grid for example so here we're going to move we have like a point for example that we're going to move also notice that i try and keep things uh like nicely horizontal i don't like create these these weird transitions i try and keep things horizontal or make deliberate vertical movements uh, we're going to move it in the z so this is going to fit within this kind of one of these little uh, cells in the grid we're going to move it by 10 uh, in fact, you can also see maybe uh, I could just put it there. That's a little bit cleaner. I also get into the habit of kind of, you know, creating a component for the input and when it comes out of the output, you can use the elephant description component. This is really good for that. Um, and then you can also take this one step further. And, you know, like I said, I try and keep my scripts quite tidy. Everything is like horizontal. If I do do vertical movements, what I can do is create what's called like a chimney. So let's say part of my script continues here, but there's another part that's gonna like uh, continue over here. By using the grid, I've just created this uh, column of the grid as, a, as the kind of transition zone for me to kind of transition from one part of the script to another part of the script that I have lower down on the canvas. This way, my script stays super organized. It's really clean and easy to read. It's a loose rule set, but once you pick it up, it's really useful in the long run. Next up and running on the same theme of keeping your script nice and tidy is the align uh, widgets, which is basically when you select a bunch of components, you'll see these little icons appear here. These work like the InDesign align tool. So if you hit left, all the components align to the left, right and center. You can do this uh, horizontally or vertically. Uh, these are super useful. I use these all the time um, just to keep your script tidy. So for example, I'm always grabbing components and just aligning them to the left here, for example, same thing. One other tip whilst you're doing this is if you hold down shift whilst you move components, they'll lock in to the horizontal or the vertical 
depending on which way you're moving, which is really nice when you move things just to make sure everything stays uh, nicely horizontally or vertically. Next up, sometimes your script can get super, super crowded and you need to just give yourself a little bit of space. One really good, great way is if you hold down Alt and click left click on the canvas, you can actually drag and give yourself a little bit of extra space within your canvas. So here, I just wanna spread these components out. You can click anywhere on your canvas and it will just kind of give yourself, create a bit more space within your canvas. You can also do this uh, vertically. If so you hold down Alt and click and then tap Alt one more time, you can also do this horizontally. This is a great way again to just give yourself a bit of breathing room as you're laying out your grasshopper script. Next up, we have a basic one, but still super useful. So uh, this is adding, removing or moving wires. So for example, if I wanna add uh, this piece of geometry into this component along with this one, I can hold down the shift key and you'll see I'll get this little plus icon and it allows me to add that into the inputs. I, I don't actually recommend ever doing this uh, because you never know quite how the data tree is gonna merge. Uh, but there you go. If you wanna do it, if you hold down shift, you can add wires uh, to another input. Uh, likewise, if you want to, let's undo that and let's remove that wire. If you hold down control, you'll see it's now red and has a minus icon. So I can now remove that wire from that input, which is also a useful one. That one I use more than the plus. But the one that I really use a lot is often I'm kind of, uh, let's say I want to bring, uh, move multiple wires from one input or output to another. You can hold down control and shift and you can grab all the wires and move it to a completely different uh, input or output, which is super useful. Next up is quick numbers, maths, and text. And this is a super useful one for uh, making your scripting a lot faster. So instead of grabbing a slider, if you just type in numbers into the search bar, it will put that value into a slider for you. And this gets a little more complicated uh, or more advanced. So it's not only typing in numbers, you can type in numbers and how many decimal places you want. You can also do ranges. So you can say, I want a number from five, uh, and then if you do the smaller than number two, five to 10, it gives you a, a slider from five all the way to 10. Uh, or you can also do a range with a starting point. So let's say uh, from two, we want it to start at five and go up to 10. It starts at five and the slider goes from two to 10. So that's super useful for sliders, number sliders and things like that. Uh, maths, you can also do a whole bunch of math stuff. For like one I always use is divide by two. So you can use the, the you know, traditional symbols for mathematics, times 10. And what it will do is automatically input uh, it for the, for the second input. That way you just put your number in the first one. And uh, it's really quick for, you know, I'm always using divide by two or times by something. This can also get a bit more intricate when you do like greater than 10, less than 10. Uh, you can just use the symbols um, equals 10. There's all these different uh, shortcuts that you can use for maps that I use quite a lot. So especially for those kind of quick access ones. And the final one is uh, text. So uh, instead of grabbing a panel and then double clicking into it and put text, you can actually use the speech marks uh, and just type it in directly and it will create a panel for you. It will also size it around the size of text, which is also super useful. I think this also works with forward, uh, two forward slashes, forward slashes, uh, hello. So whichever one uh, you prefer. Uh, you can also do it with the scribble, um, although I don't have oh I, I don't have that one on my keyboard, so I never use it anymore. But these are really good for especially when you're like speed scripting. This really helps me to uh, speed up my scripting process. Next up, kind of a fun one, good for when you're just starting out, but also I use this when I'm not quite sure where this component actually comes from, especially when you have a ton of plugins in your 
uh, grasshopper. So if you hit uh, Control Alt and then left click on the component, it actually tells you where this component comes from. So I can see this is a pufferfish component. It's under the curves folder and this is where the component lives. So this is really useful if you're kind of not quite sure where this comes from uh, or you're just starting out and you not exactly sure where it is in the grasshopper native components. Next up, another one that really helps you speed up your workflows is we all know that if you right click on inputs, you have all these quick modifiers, right? But you can actually quickly uh, access them by using the keyboard. So if you right click on the input and you just hit G, that will graft. Same thing, right click F will flatten, uh, S will simplify. Uh, for example, here we want degrees, so we hit D. Uh, here we may want to reverse, so we hit R. Uh, here we'll graft again. And then you can also hit B for bake, and then you get the baking uh, interface. So again, that's a really quick way to just simply quickly apply these modifiers using these keyboard shortcuts. Another one that's really useful, especially when you're sending scripts to other people, uh, is that you can actually internalize geometry and information and objects and all that kind of stuff. So let's say we have our traditional way of bringing in geometry onto our grasshopper canvas, and then you know we go on to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we can actually uh, internalize this geometry inside that component. So what that means is if we right click on the component, we internalize the data the information now lives inside of that component. If I come back to Rhino and delete that, the box still lives on in our Grasshopper scripts, right? We don't need that, that connection to uh, Rhino. So when if I'm sending someone a script, I can just send them the script. I don't need to send the Rhino file as well. Of course, once they receive it, they can just, you know, bake this geometry back and then they've got the, uh, the, the geometry in their own Rhino file. So this is a really nice way to just streamline sending uh, grasshopper files to teammates and things like that. Finally, another good one for both beginners and expert users is selecting and navigating through your script. So, you know, I have my scripts kind of made, maybe I've just received this, I wanna kind of understand it a little bit more. Uh, I often like grab a component, hold control, and then you hit right and left on the keyboard and it will go through each of the components like all of the connects to the inputs and then to the outputs and then you can kind of go through the script depending how complicated it is you can go through one by one let's say here and look at all the components like the sequence of them which is really useful another way that you can use this which is super useful is you can select a component and then you hold control and shift and hit right or left and it will select all of the components upstream from that point uh, that you selected uh, and a great way that I use this is, for example, at the end of my script, I could select all the, the outputs, do control shift and then hit left. And basically it will select all the components that come downstream from my outputs. And then you'll be able to see, you know, for example, these I'm not really using. So technically these would be kind of dead uh, leftover parts of my script that I may want to delete. Once you have things all selected, you can also hit Control Shift I to invert your selection. And let's say all this stuff might be dead script to me, so I could delete it or not. So um, I often use these things to search through my script or clean out any junk uh, from my script. Okay, cheating here a little bit. I'm on my 11th. This is gonna be my bonus tip because I do use this all the time. I call this using the green guy. In the preview selection, you, you hit the little green icon and basically it will only show you uh, geometry of the components you have selected. So for example, this is really good for understanding how scripts actually work. So here, if I select this, you actually see, I can see the plane and also the rectangle of the building. And what this is really useful for is you can kind of see the sequence of things happening, right? Okay, now I've copied up all my curves, I've rotating it, I've now got this geometry, there's some lofting going on here, I can see they're taking the facade, they're offsetting it. So you can kind of see, especially when combined with uh, holding like control and right and you just go through one by one, you can start to understand a little bit about 
how the script is actually working and the sequence of it. So this is a great one, especially if, if you're beginning and you're often like downloading scripts and trying to un deconstruct and understand how they actually work. So there you go, a little bonus tip here uh, to finish things off.